your, kill your clone. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab a beer real quick. You guys talk and it'll record. I'll be right back. I don't know how to do that. Try it. Back. <laughs> I want a sandwich. I haven't even had lunch. Ah, that's well, your problem. I only had one beer. It's not enough. Didn't you just go to one Safeway? That does count. I just went to Safeway, yes. But I didn't have time to treat myself. So, Christopher, what are your influences for your visual? <laughs> 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 yes, Christopher, tell us definitely about it. Uh... Not, it's not 2001. It's definitely not 2001. That's all you have to know. How, so how well do you guys all know each other? Where'd Fernando go? Uh, hmm? I don't know. Yeah, here. Just went to get a sandwich or something from the fridge. So, do, are, have you guys all met before, or are you just yeah, yeah, yeah? You met Fernando as well. Y yes, yeah. we did. Okay. Chris and I are moving to the same city in a few weeks, and yeah. we do and, stuff uh, for work kids as well, which you should totally yes. check out. It's workkidscollective.com. Wait, say, wait, what was that again? What should I check out? Wordkidscollective.com. Oh, okay. Which is uh, an arts collective started by Christopher. Um, it's a very serious project. Serious so, project? Come on. Yeah. I'll include a link. Good stuff. Uh, there's, oh. I'm out. Oh, I didn't serious even project. realize, Fernando, I didn't even realize that was you because you've got the cat, cat face on. <laughs> Wait, wait. I'm, I'm a cat princess. What did you think it was? I don't know. I thought it was you. <laughs> Beards. Um, so, I met Fernando actually at Fantastic Arcade last year. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, cool. So, yeah. And I keep bumping into you in every single event. And then, yeah. And actually, Christopher was like one of the first people that supported us when we first launched Photonica. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool game. Yeah. And it's so one of the last we met <laughs> in, <true>. in person. <laughs> have you guys ta ever yeah, talked yeah. about the, the? Have you guys ever talked about the fact that your games are all kind of in a have a sort of a similar vibe to them, in terms of like cosmic? I think we of, really didn't. Yeah, I told Fernando that he has to put in a mirror moon base level in panoramic. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Me or somebody else? <laughs> and we talked to Trick Christopher about the same thing. <laughs> I actually really loved your like your games before I met you. Thank you, or Christopher's game. <laughs> I need to play. I want to play a new build of Eleven, Christopher. I think the last time I played oh, it. Oh, yeah, totally. Arcade. I haven't gotten that much further, though. Oh, that's OK. Oh, and we, we have a secret yeah, it's, it's 11 uh, artifact in your room. You have my Rift kit. Yes. What's up with that? It's so perfect. Can you officially announce the Rift version huh? of 11? <laughs> Wait, I meant there was a couple of things that happened there. So First, you, you said there was an 11 thing in Mirror Moon? Yeah, there's a we have uh, indie cameos in in Mirror Moon, and there are three D models artifacts of other indie games, and we have an eleven. Uh, well, the eleven sort of a main character of eleven. It's in a planet of Mirror Moon. Oh, that's awesome! Along with other stuff. Yeah, Is there are panoramic elements in Mirror Moon. Sorry? And there's there anything panoramical, panoramical, in there? panoramical in there? No, actually, no. Well, we can still put hmm. one if you want to. I, see. I, see. I think you should merge those two games together. Yeah, you would probably should. We should just make one game. Panoramical. Panoramical moon. <laughs> it was like I was saying at, at Fantastic Arcade, I want to play a game that's, uh, what was it? you Shit, I can't even remember now. It was like, oh yeah, you fly, you fly over a planet and it's panoramical, and then you land and it's Proteus, and then you climb a mountain and it's Yeti Hunter. <laughs> I totally play that. 
Um, okay, so well, you all you all know each other. You all know each other from different events and stuff. You've never discussed that there might be a similar um, vibe going through uh, all three of the games, but there but there's cross pollination. There there's uh, other indie references in Mirror Moon. Um, what's some stuff that uh, we should talk about? If you were if you were going to talk, if try to approach a uh, person who isn't like a gamer or, or an indie gamer, somebody who is has like an interest in science fiction um, and interesting art, other than the look of the game, what what is something that you would try and get across? Like all three of you go one after the other. I didn't understand the question. And I didn't either. <laughs> what what are what what uh, what's your your pitch for the game? Yeah, to... What's your pitch to someone who's not who doesn't play video games regularly? Oh my god, <laughs> that's super tough. Do you know do you know that part in in Life Aquatic when? He's like, can we start from easier questions? Like, what's your favorite ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, why don't you ask us, just for starters, what Army. is appearing in the graphical style that we chose? Because that's something I would really like to know as well. Like, because okay. you said, like, old games are not an inspiration and should not be the focus of this chat. Yeah. So we if it's not old games, why do these games look like they look the way I look? They they look. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was I think that was my first question actually. <laughs> no, it was because <laughs> I said that I didn't want to compare it to old games. I wanted to talk about the way it looked. Right. Right. So Christopher did. did. So we lost Christopher. Yeah, I mean to me like Panoramica looks the way it looks because I didn't put much time into modeling. Mm. Um, I instead wanted to focus on trying to make, you know, everything look good enough that I can show it to people without going crazy about, you know, crazy, uh, like, modeling, which I don't really enjoy. I, I don't know. I focus a lot in color schemes and trying to make nice transitions between elements. And, uh, Not to mention, focusing. I mean, with Panoramical, because it's an instrument and because the thing that's the most important to it is the responsiveness between the controls and what you see, having it be low poly means it's you've got a better likelihood that it's going to be very fast, like a high frame rate. It's not going to lag. It's not going to destroy that experience mm -hmm. of having having playing it almost like it's an instrument. Well, I didn't really think about uh, you know optimization and making it run fast while I was making it, and it actually uh, it runs okay, but I have a lot of work to do in optimizing it because there's like how, how often and does, uh, and something. The controller update is that like as frequently as the frame rate? Or no, like every time you move the controller. All right, you get but updates. it can update very frequently. I'm yeah. Just wondering. yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, and also, like, I really like the idea that uh, your brain fills up the blanks when you have more abstract-looking images. Uh, kind of like what happens with pixel art, where I don't know a pixel art character will have like very little information, but uh, your mind is f filling this very simple shape with a lot of expression and a lot of elements that aren't there. Uh, and I think the same happened with Paranormal and with any you know, any other abstract looking uh, you know, game or, or image. And I, I think that really works for Paranormal. It, it's yeah. worked really well because the, a lot of people, uh, you know, got a really good response to the game. Uh, with all the combinations of the elements, and it's hard to make it look really, really bad. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine I managed. With that. I managed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you guys? Are you ever like worried 
uh, it feels like low poly is becoming this huge thing in India. I know. It's kind of like it's, it's, it's to me it's, like it's, it's pixel large. art. I kind of mentioned that a little bit in this article just in passing because none of the people that are reading it are going to know what low poly is. But I kind of said that like you know this is a thing that's kind of in vogue right now. It's kind of crept up behind pixel art, but. Um, I feel like you guys are kind of have super made it your own, and I don't. When I think, I hope so. Yeah, because <laughs> when I started, it was in like we started before it was cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah. no, I well, mean, I'm gonna. I mean, I I'm kind of like see, presenting I only, you guys. I don't even see eleven as low poly in a lot of ways because I don't do like the flat shaded surfaces and stuff like that. It's just mm. weird effects and shit. But then it's kind of gotten put in that corner, which is fine because I love Panoramical and Mirror Moon, for example. But I don't feel like I'm in the same corner as. Yeah, you've got a lot of shaders and stuff going on, so it's yeah, like quite... crazy visual effects, yeah. and so I don't yeah. feel like I'm in quite the same family as you know those low poly, flat shaded, inspired by uh, what's it called, Wipeout, uh, right. that kind of stuff. I think you guys all, more importantly than having anything to do with low poly, you, you're, everything is, it, the stuff that you're doing is very, there's very sort of like obsessed with geometry and kind yeah, of definitely. space. Um, that I can agree with. These are games mean. about sort of like spatial relations, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're exploring yeah. sort of like, there's, a, there's definitely a feeling of like your place in a, in a large environment. Even panoramical where you're just sort of orbiting you feel very small in the, in the face of something very large. Mm -hmm. And it's presented in a very simple kind of stylized way. Um, and when, you, when you dropped off, Christopher, I was, I was saying basically, like, we're not going to talk about comparisons to other games or old games. We were just going to talk about, like, why, what inspired the art of your game and the, and the way that it looks. So I guess I would pose that question to you next. I would say the first thing that jumps to mind is the Stargate sequence of 2001. Uh, that feels very yeah. elevenish. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've said that recently in a, an interview. But yeah, definitely 2001. But the something that's really funny though, even though I'm kind of a Cubit fan, I hadn't even seen the movie before I started Eleven. That wow. doesn't mean I wasn't inspired by it though, because obviously I knew the sequence and I had seen like gifs and stuff from it, so. <laughs> It's not like I didn't know what it was, yeah. but it's an interesting anecdote that I hadn't seen the movie before. That's I started crazy. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think I actually the Triangle Tunnel was kind of inspired by something I saw on Vimeo. Uh, mm. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> actually, when I started uh, working on Paranical, and I you know started obsessing like with this just looking up illustrators in Vimeo in like Tumblr or you know animation shirts in Vimeo and stuff like that and uh, I really like that you know like that low poly landscape kind of thing but nowadays uh, I've been spending the past couple of weeks uh, you know gathering a lot of references and kind of like inspirations for for new scenes. And I steer away from that. Like I now I'm mostly looking at uh, like weird, cool things in nature. Like I will, like, I don't know, download documentaries or just sound like Ed Key. Like I'm now I'm stealing things from nature instead of from other illustrators. I noticed there was a lot more in the new in the new level. There's a lot more kind of like organic, mushroomy kind of forms than just sort of mountainous forms. Like it seemed yeah. like there were more sort of plant-like things that were happening. Yeah. They weren't like super detailed or anything, but these they 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 didn't look like they were uh, geography. Yeah, because like I found that um, it's much more interesting when. Uh, what you're seeing, at least in Paranical, kind of looks like a space that you're modifying. And when it's stuff that you can relate to, things that you saw in real life, than just graphic elements, you know, just like 
you know, motion graphics abstract elements don't work that well. Um, so I mean, you know, I don't want to make it, you know, like figurative or based on real stuff. Right. I want to keep it abstract, but I also want to keep it kind of in like an, in the middle, you know. Uh, so it's not directly representational, but it definitely reminds elements remind you of clouds or mountains or, or yeah, yeah, or whatever. Uh, I think we also have to acknowledge that there's a uh, technology driven aesthetic here some way because the fact that we all use Unity and that we are forced uh, uh, to deal with the limitations of this software and at the same time with the limitations of being uh, a single developer or two developers and whatever, uh, you know, building assets is that one thing that you want to you don't want to deal with because it's a shit ton of time and a shit ton of uh, efforts and money and whatever. So the thing I would say though about I hear that a lot people throwing around that uh, we do stuff because this way because they we're only two people, but I don't see it like that because when while I'm creating I feel like well what can I make and I don't worry about like. What are what what's what time would this take? It's more like I I want to do something that I can be in control of and I can make everything myself and I find a way to do that and yeah sure that helps me with time as well but I wouldn't say that time is something that that factors into that that would to me be something that I think about afterwards like all right this this part that I made this prototype took this amount of time so. This, if I have two months, yeah, then I can make eight levels or whatever. Uh, I'm just saying that I'm not doing stuff because it takes less time. No, I'm it's it's probably a mix of the two things. I mean, you got used to uh, think and prototype on ideas that you know you'll be in not completely comfortable with, but that are doable within your abilities and yeah. whatever because me and Pietro for example we have a lot of weird ideas of really complex shit with real graphic whatever worlds and like uh, MMO things whatever and then what happens is that we start to I don't know thinking about it and then you scale it down you scale it down you scale it down till it's 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 doable so it's a triangle <laughs> no, not necessarily. But you know, you try to to still uh, keep those qualities, but at the same time, uh, I don't know, make it possible within within our lives. <laughs> actually, I love I that. Um, most of the elements in Panoramical are actually me trying to make something and then taking too long. Because I don't know, I can code it or like something breaks, and I'm spending way too much time with it, and I have to make something, and then I like dump it down to like the simplest possible thing that doesn't look bad, um, <laughs> and like almost anything, <laughs> everything is like. I think you guys are too hard on you, yourselves. <laughs> like personally, yeah. I feel like I just desperately try to do something I haven't seen before, kind of. And sure, I've seen Eleven before, that's not what I'm saying, like the style and stuff, but don't see a lot of that in games, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it actually, it directly, Eleven didn't directly remind me of any other games, it reminded me of some kind of cool new stuff I was seeing in motion graphics, you know, I've seen like PSYOP and some of these yeah. kind of, kind of similar stuff. Buy, like, Great to see that. I watch a lot of motion graphics, so definitely that's been a huge inspiration. And so that's a fair comparison. Let me hear. But for example, a lot of um, motion graphics, for example, in this last years, especially that kind of motion graphics that come from Cinema 4D, it's mm -hmm. extremely tight to the software. 
that it's making that motion graphic possible. I mean, there's a, there's a, I, I, I think we, we can not deny that there's a, um, the tools help create tool, this uh, relationship mm -hmm. with the yeah. work we do. And at the same time, I totally agree thing. that I use Blender and we use Unity, so uh, we always try to do to make the most out of these tools, not to make obvious things, but you always ask yourself the question, how can I make something that it's um, mine through this tool and within its sure, limitations? So sure. I don't think that Mirror Moon is the same as anything else I've seen out there. I just realize that it's a mix between what I want to do, my inspirations and my ideas, uh, the amount of work that I put in there, and also a sort of a kind of software li limitation. Maybe it's the 20%, but it's there. But also, you pick you pick your you pick your battles for the limitations, right? You use the limitations. You 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 of course a certain type of game that works with certain tools, and you don't you don't fight those limitations. You play into them. It's like you know, people don't yeah. com complain about oil painting, like making pictures that look like oil paintings. That's they picked oil paint because they wanted to make an oil painting. That's what yes. I was going to come yes. to the fact that even if somebody can look at a screenshot from my game and say, well, this looks like it was made in Unity. It's like, does that really matter? What's the difference between something like old painting and Unity? Like, they're tools. They're something well, that I can use to create... I think the, same, I the, the same thing goes for, you know, film stock. You know, you shoot, you shoot a movie on pixel vision for a reason. You shoot a movie right. on 35 millimeter for a reason. It's because you have a story that needs to be told with that medium, so... But you that, need to be aware of yeah, that. I don't think there's uh, you know games that you can say they were made in a certain tool for uh, you know aesthetic purposes. No, As no, you no. can say you know you use video to portray I don't know like handful style or whatever. But uh, I sometimes hear style. people putting yeah. down you know engines or whatever. Oh by yeah, yeah. Saying, That's, well, yeah. this game looks like this engine. Yeah. As if it's a bad thing, and I'm like, well, it's just a tool, and the thing you create with it, it's that's the value. And even if it looks like the tool or not, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because all painting is going to look like all painting, and you is going to. But there is like a difference you. there when you keep in consideration the mastery of the tool. So one thing is to use a tool to demonstrate your mastering it and use its properties to say something. And another thing is letting the tool define what you can say and showing that you have you do not complete um, um, ownership or complete uh, control over the tool you're using. I think when you see like uh, when you see like a, 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 any Photoshop work that you can tell what tool has been used where, and it, it, it shows an obvious artifact of the algorithm that has done that. And the piece is not about that algorithm. It's not like the, the topic of that photo is not discussing that particular Photoshop tool. Then there is a problem because that becomes the it becomes the protagonist of that image. And the same thing can happen in games. When you have a game that has cover mechanics because it's made in a in a tool that that it was used to make years of war, then you have a problem if you're not trying to say that exact thing, but you just like kind of fell back to doing that because that's what you had in your hands. If you're doing an oil painting and it shows that it's oil, but you are trying to do a very realistic thing uh, that had like a, an acrylic look and it looks like it's oil painting because you made it in oil painting, it's because you don't own the tool and you don't know what tool to use. But you're yeah. always going to I guess that's a mark of mastery, that right? Is p picking the right tool for the job. If you only know one tool, you know, if you only if you only know how to use a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. <laughs> um, before before you guys get to, I want to hear some Mirror Moon, some visual influences. Let's talk about the look of Mirror Moon, and I, I know you guys have been doing a lot of press for it, so you've probably seen all this a million times. But I gotta go. Uh, catch you later. All right. Just <laughs> this is um, Very fun. Very fun. Uh, we, I mean. Visual influences for Mirror Moon are a shit ton of stuff. Uh, 
If you could pick three. Blended together in a very uh, pistol-like sauce. Uh, the, the, so, um, there's, of course, um, uh, Mebius, Mebius, that I guess you all know. Um, that was a big inspiration, not only for Mirror Moon. Is I mean, it's personally, has been part. I've been following the work of Mebius uh, for a long time. Did and you get to see Yodorowsky's Dune while you were at, while you were at? Uh, no, no, oh, it I was missed really it. Good. <laughs> it's really Sorry. good. Sorry, I was I looking don't... forward to it, but I missed it. And. And so, uh, Mebius was definitely a big inspiration, especially for um, trying to represent that sense of um, sublime in a romantic way that we were trying to achieve in Mirror Moon, you know, through this very uh, powerful yet empty landscapes, okay? Um, and, and Mebius is definitely a, a master of this, you know crystal in the desert with nothing and some smoke and whatever. And he was, excellent. He was excellent. excellent at creating a sense of scale, too. He would always, see there, yes. he would always start, you know, with a full page panel with, like, a tiny character you know, flying in front yeah, of Yeah, you have this idea of this, this uh, humongous things and, and, and every character is surrounded by this dream world, okay, that you cannot contain as a single individual, okay, and that's that's definitely a thing that is part of Mirror Moon, not only aesthetically, but also um, fiction-wise, because the idea of the galaxy, the idea of this discovery of the galaxy, it's a collaborative thing, and it cannot be understood or contained by a single individual. It's part of of the the fictional world of Mirror Moon. And then I guess that uh, uh, another big influence where a lot of sci-fi movies from the 70s and 80s, from Alien, like, you know, that, that trailer of the interface of the booting up sequence of the Nostromo in, in Alien or stuff like that was definitely a big inspiration, um, both aesthetic-wise and fiction-wise for uh, the interface part of the game. And I have to say that a lot of works from, you know, Tarkovsky or even uh, old book covers from science fiction works from the 70s have been a big inspiration for Mirror Moon. And it's also the, the, the I don't know to say, the idea of this, these desertic or desert landscapes. Um, they also come from what I imagined while I was reading written science fiction, you know? Yeah. Uh, which is not necessarily referred to pictures I've seen or illustrations or movie I've seen, but it's something, some visual that these books uh, created in, 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 um, in the back of my mind. So, especially Stannis of Lem, but yeah. yeah. That's funny. I, I think that you guys have a have a very original vision, because even like the, even the stuff that you're citing is like visual references. Like if you look at you know, Mobius, it's incredibly gribbly. Like there's a lot of very organic kind yes. of uh, detail to it. Um, Tarkovsky. I mean, you look at the the space station and Solaris is probably the closest thing he gets to any kind of. Uh, clean surfaces, and even it's littered, and there's stuff everywhere. And um, uh, you know, the, his the main vision from that is like the planet itself, which is this very yes. liquid, organic, fluid kind of form. So I really feel like uh, you you guys are kind of taking these ideas and, and sort of creating your own vision. You know, you don't. Uh, well, most of the time, the the thing is, it, I guess that we sort of a uh, all work a little bit this way is that you have a lot of references of different kinds but what you do is that you don't take a piece out of it and put it somewhere else you take something you process it and and then you make 
something new out of that idea is not taking and moving. It's like taking processing and and creating your own version of that part that you took out of like, that like reference. Should, and what would that thing explain. look like if seen through our style, through the right. things we've been doing and we've been researching? I can just say something because it's yeah. kind of an interesting observation. I totally agree with you guys. I've been like getting back into working with doing my own music again, and I start the music with like listening to some couple of tracks that I like that I like, wish I could do and, and try to sort of recreate that, but it never comes out the same way, even though, you know, even when I'm sort of trying, which I'm not with my games, but maybe while I'm trying to learn music, but it doesn't come out the same way, but I hear something that's interesting in it, and I take that and just run with it, sort of. Uh, and it's interesting to see, and I totally agree that you you have all these inspirations, but they come out in a way that hopefully is not too recognizable to the original. And you're well, they always not... get filtered through your own kind of experience. Yeah, and it's not like you're rearranging pieces and then putting that out there because it happens in a way more organic way, sort of. <clears throat> Sorry. Nicola, <laughs> did you see that they're going to do a... Um... An animated uh, version of uh, the Future Logical Congress. The, no, I did not know that. Limbo. Really? Yeah. It's an the guy animated did, version. Who's doing it? Uh, the guy that did uh, Waltz with uh, Bashar. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that was pretty cool. That's yeah. interesting. I mean, uh, they they definitely do have the skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite Loom books, so I'm excited to see that. I hope yeah. it turns out well. That one, that one, and memoirs in a memoirs in a bathtub was really good. Oh, okay. And Solaris. I love his master voice. Honestly, it's yeah. like my 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 best. Um, Lem, my favorite Lem book. But also, Eden. Uh, I never read Eden. Um, Solaris and the Futurological Congress is pretty good actually, yeah. and and Absolute Vacuum is pretty cool also. But yeah. it's a it's not science fiction. It's it's a very strange take on him trying to describe books that do. Uh, he, he's writing um, reviews of books that do not exist. Oh, that's great. Uh, it's, <laughs> So you guys sound like you're really into sci-fi, because I'm not. I'm not like a huge sci-fi person or anything. How do you feel about that, Fernando? Are you very much into sci-fi? I'm pretty into sci-fi. I'm. I'm not hardcore fan or anything, but. Uh, okay. But yeah, I. I read a lot of Philip K. Dick and. Yeah, and I have too. Like, like a, a couple mm. of those old. Classics. Yeah, I have read because, and I love those. Kind of. I feel like that's the unifying thing among all, all, all three games. Is there's definitely a feel of not just like sci-fi, but of like some sort of throwback to some very like primal classic kind of. Not the between the sort of Buck Rogers sci-fi and 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 whatever we've got the sort of slavish genre stuff that we've got now. There's this sort of like inner zone of like seventies and eighties kind of. Cosmic head trippy like post acid kind of sci-fi, and I feel like you guys all kind of tap into that. There's a lot of wordlessness, like you know, there's a, there's a very limited amount of exposition in Mirror Moon, but it's very mysterious. Um, for the most part, these are all very quiet games. Um, well, I mostly make uh, quiet games, or like I I'm pretty scared of text because. Yeah. I whenever I try to make something narrative or write something, I feel that it really really sucks. Um, so I is actually the wrong word because they're all actually use sound really amazingly. They're they're lonely games. Hmm. I guess that's the word. Hmm. I actually there's designed no, there's Pyramid no interaction to play. with any other characters in, in any of these games. Actually, you never meet another per another person in Mirror Moon. You only see. The name oh, kind of. <laughs> are you are you putting other characters in eleven? 
Are they spoilers? No, no, no. I'm saying yeah. in Mirror Moon, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're so like the the mirror. <laughs> Spoiler. Oh, but that's just you. <laughs> yeah, but there is something really interesting to that. Yeah. It's your it's your relationship with yourself, I guess. I was kind of heartbroken, though. I mean, it looks like an amazing movie, but Gravity is basically exactly the same idea as I have for Eleven from the start. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Trying Not to that keep I'm worried that it's going to gonna change anything or anything like that. It's just, just like, in some way, I can't let go of the fact that they're very similar. <laughs> Why? How is, it, how is it similar? It's like about someone who's thrown out while they're on a spacewalk or whatever, yeah. and then... They're so, drifting okay, in space. The, like, the, the very original, like, the first idea I had for Eleven was that it was going to be a game about someone who, while they were on a spacewalk, were thrown out and had no way of getting back to their ship, and then they were sucked into this weird black hole or whatever you want to call it, and they learned the secrets of the universe, but they never had any means of getting back to Earth, so... Cause I and you never, you hadn't seen 2001. I know, I was going to say that. That's <laughs> the whole, that's the whole end of 2001. <laughs> well, to me, 2001 really isn't about that, like, the, at most, it's, or to me, it's more about, the, like, a, a story about how, first they show how humans learn violence. Right, but the end of how, 2001, Dave sure, leaves, sure. leaves the ship and, and never to return and gets sucked into some sort of... Warp yeah. or, you know. Well, I kind of knew that. You know, 2001 is sort of... Everyone knows what that is. I knew what it was before I saw it, kind of. Uh, I like that so you were kind I'm not of making something re that was influenced by 2001 without having seen it yet, with just, like, your ideas of what... Well, in a way, I <laughs> think it's good to me to not have known. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, but anyway... It's funny that you mentioned gravity and the and that the have having that be there was a similar seed because when I when you have you have you seen gravity? Mm -mm. So you should see gravity. I don't think so, it's out here. Oh really? When when so when she first uh, when the shit hits the fan and she goes off tumbling through space, it is this incredibly nauseating claustrophobic experience because it's mm -hmm. like point of view through her. Her, mm -hmm. And she's just flipping over and over and over again and, like, hyperventilating for a really long time. And it was funny because it actually reminded me when we were when we did Eleven in the planetarium, you somebody did, got uh, the controller and just barrel rolling <laughs> over and over. And, like, the stars are... It was, it was projected inside a planetarium. I don't know if you heard... You guys heard that we did this, yeah. but everybody was just yeah. like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man, can we do Mirror Moon like that? I'm jealous. Oh, a planetarium? Man. Fuck yeah! Let's do I would it. Love to, I would love to make some stuff <laughs> for uh, for the planetarium. You have to be able to deform the graphics in a very particular way. Um, yeah. Eleven worked up until uh, Christopher sent us a new build that showed <laughs> the front of the pod, and then that got all deformed and distorted, and it didn't work oh, anymore. But when God. it was just point of view, it, it worked. Mm. I wish I got a working version in time to you guys. I'm sorry about that, but... Oh, that's you know, fine. I mean, we that, that, that work and everything was so seat of our pants that I'm amazed it went. It was it went pretty well. I'm amazed it went as well as it did, considering we got a late Because I did get uh, finish a, like a working version out that night, but that was too late for you guys to change it because the event had started like two hours yeah. ago. <laughs> and I tried one that you sent, and there was still like a couple of weird problems. Yeah. I know. I kept sending new builds. Like I kept working <laughs> on it, and, and the the one that actually worked, I didn't get that to you guys until like two hours after you started, and you had told me like that you didn't have proper internet connection or anything. So I don't know. <laughs> you can always do it again. I would I I would like to get the specs on how on the lens distortion. Yeah, because and actually the, give it to developers and have them like. In the last version I sent, you could like set up the field of view and oh. change uh, fisheye um, effect um, like the amount so that you could have tweaked it, but it was way too late for that. Yeah. <laughs> Next time. Yeah.
Um, what what are some burning things that we want to add? We we talked about some visual inspiration for all of these. We talked about our relationships with classic science fiction a little bit. Pietro Costi sends up. I have yep. a question. Mm -hmm. So it's it seems to me that there is a common thread of space and you know, like space as a place, and like with all the meaning. Like even if Christopher doesn't like love sci-fi too much, it's he's clearly uh, fascinated by space. And I was wondering, since like of all three games, uh, Fernando is the only one that takes place not explicitly in space. If it's in orbit, it's transitional. It started as a, like the prototype was meant to be, you know, you were orbiting this planet and you were changing the planet. And then it, it morphed into like, changing the space, but you're supposed to be kind of uh, on the ground, witnessing mm -hmm. this landscape that is morphing in front of you. But, yeah. So it's not a game about space? It's not. No, it's a game about. It's a cosmic experience, though. You're you're passing over the surface of a planet and like terraforming it with some sort of control bank. I mean, that's sure. that's a pretty science fiction feeling. Like, I would never <laughs> explain it like that. Well, that sort of not so many words. What but... I am romantic about, panoramic <laughs> for. I like that it's like super abstract and you don't have to put it into any context. You're just right. enjoying this shit. I've heard no, people right. say that you're actually in the like in microscopic size in yeah, the arm right. of someone. It's like a quantum thing by observing it, you're changing it. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting. I, yeah, I so thought it was I think... like my intestines or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we can say that Panoramical is has a has a science fiction feel to it without being it does. didactic and like saying what it represents because that would be limiting. Sure. But there's a feeling of space. <laughs> I mean there's a there's a there's a, a exterior sky like expanse and then there's a planetoid like body then you're passing mm -hmm. over. I mean, that's... Yeah. In, in, you know, whatever capacity space. I some personally am very interested in 3D space as well. Like, how can we do something interesting in 3D space in games? I'm not talking about space space. I'm talking about, like, just regular space. Right. Um, because we have it in a lot of games these days, but they don't really do much with it, it's like you're almost moving on planes and shooting at each other <laughs> in most games. Uh, so if you, in Eleven, if you look at the puzzles and think about it, they're actually all about like your relative position to stuff, or they're all about exploring 3D space, sort of, uh, because I think that's really interesting and not explored enough. And That's a difference. Space, actually, you know, uh, all these other games, all these other games have gravity and a sense of what is up. Mm. Eleven is there's definitely there's no sense of up. It's just it's it's completely three D spatial. Mm. I actually have this weird note in my notebook that I made a couple of years ago, which was a game about going places and feeling. Stuff. <laughs> yes. Everybody likes to feel stuff. <laughs> I have no idea what I was thinking about, but yeah, I guess that's the idea that's been. You guys want to ask each other any questions? Chris, when are you going to Berlin? The fourth of November. Yay! <laughs> Did you know that Steven just moved as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Berlin. That's yeah. Awesome. Man, it's the place. Going there on the but has he moved already? Yeah, I think. Oh, they did a party, like the um, indie house go away party. Oh yeah, I heard about that. All right, all right. So I, I think knew he was going, but I I didn't know when he was going. Well, do you I, know the we were talking about? Huh? No, no, I don't. It's Stephen Lavelle in Crepare. 
Oh, okay. He's also moving to Berlin. Everyone, everyone that's cool is moving to Berlin. Everyone yeah. should move to Berlin. Aside it's like from us, perfect yeah. center in Europe. For because we're not cool. Games place. I, I, I have a question. To game I have what? a question for Fernando. Okay. Go. Sure. Hi, Fernando. Let me adjust my monocle. <laughs> Nicola. Go. Uh, uh, how? The um, world of synthesizers and the actual uh, physical objects, okay, that interact with uh, panoramical influenced the building of the game. I mean, is it? Uh, did it started from the object and then you created something to be yeah, used with this object, or vice from... versa? You had no, the it started idea of... from the nano control controller. Okay. Uh, it was actually actually have, I don't know why I have like, two notes here, but so I was staying with I don't know if you guys know it, but I was staying with David Kanaga uh, like after CDC a couple of years ago, and you know I I was tired and what's best to rest than to do work, so I saw the nano control. Controller which has like all the knobs and sliders and stuff, and I didn't know about it up until then. Uh, it was just lying around there in the house, and um, you know I started to try to come up with weird prototypes. Uh, you know I was trying to like make a game using the interface, like you were controlling a face, and oh, okay. uh, there was this like fighting game slash drawing game. And then I came up with like a changing world thing here. Mm -hmm. Mundo que cambia. Um, mundo que cambia. And then I came up with like a bunch of stuff, uh, like different states uh, of that you could change and... with oh, wow. the with the well, like I was binding one state to each of the sliders and stuff. So it definitely was. Made for the nano control, okay. uh, and it still is because it still has you know nine elements that you can morph. Um, and I didn't yeah, know about uh, synthesizers or MIDI controllers up until then. Uh, and then I started doing more stuff with uh, like the launchpad and other MIDI controllers. But yeah, it's a story. I remember the uh, earlier prototypes you posted. Hmm. They were cool, but not at all as pretty. <laughs> 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 Which is interesting, because back when you posted them, you were obviously more interested in experimenting with the uh, controller. Mm. And then yeah, and I was trying to get, come up with like clever gameplay mechanics for the control. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I remember the early prototypes for Proteus you posted. Oh, no, <laughs> Panoramical. Mm. On in Kapara's ballroom, you had oh, like yeah. way earlier stuff that was yeah, cool, yeah. Th that was that two-day prototype we made it in, like like one day. Uh, what was interesting is that so I went out and bought one, and what we did is uh, David would work on his own on like Ableton Live, doing music for like just controlling controlling with the with the controller, and then I would work on a game. And then we just run both things side by side and see what it felt like. Uh, so there wasn't any back and forth uh, in the design of the, of the prototype. It was just you know just coming up with stuff. And what was really interesting is that you know I I did this very uh, simple. I showed it that fantastic game, this simple ugly planet that you will morph. Uh, and it, you know, it was you didn't do anything. You would just change the shapes of stuff. Uh, but then when we had the David music, that would also change when you change stuff. Suddenly, like I don't know, your brain starts to do weird stuff where you feel like the sound is coming up from these like shapes that are changing before you. Um, and I don't know why that works, but it does. Uh, so, I don't know. We just kept doing stuff. I want to see a physical controller for Mirror Moon. I want to <laughs> see that whole kind of like cockpit reconstructed yeah. as physical objects. Next I'm year. working on it. 
<laughs> Next year, fantastic arcade. Third time in a row for Mirror Moon there. We build a little cockpit. <laughs> with two screens. Are you in? Do it. That would be amazing. Uh, I'll do it. If, if you can I find won. me... Twenty thousand dollars to build that. But doesn't like Boston have some like art funds or something? Yeah. What are you saying? <laughs> I don't know. Vegas Rancheros just uh, got connected with a with a organization called uh, Art uh, Crap was Art Scene Alliance, uh, and they we can we can do fundraisers now, but. Fantastic oh. Arcade is pretty pretty dependent on sponsors, and I only really have two sponsors right now. So. All right. But next Are year will like be next year will be bigger. For sponsors at Fantastic Arcade or is that uh, Fantastic Sony, Art Festival? No. That? Yeah, Sony Sony third party is the biggest sponsor, and then Devolver was a publisher in Austin, and they sponsored this year. Um, that's pretty much it. We didn't really. We got such a late start this year. We didn't know where we were going to be, so we. I couldn't really like approach sponsors and be like, "Hey, we've got this much square footage and this many walls." So we kind of just went with like the people who were going to sponsor us, no matter what. That are, have always been super supportive. Yeah, so. Right. What are you saying, Christopher? Uh, about what? Wait. You were saying something. I don't know. I probably controllers. Huh? Was it physical controllers? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't say that anything, but I can say that I remember we went. I went with my sister to um, the arcade or the what was it called? The Virgin Media Game Space. Mm -hmm. While uh, Fernando was showing um, Panoramical, and I had eleven there. And my sister really enjoyed Panoramical. Like it's so, it was so easy for her to grasp, even though that she doesn't know. Like she's not game to it or whatever you want. Yeah, to call I found it. that really weird because it's like people that don't really play games are super scared of game controllers. That's uh, right. I, I don't know. Like they relate uh, to that object to something that they're really bad at, so they feel mm -hmm. like ashamed or something. So they won't so, approach it. But even if they see this weird interface that it's as complex or even more complex than a game controller uh, in a setting of a gallery or whatever, uh, and they're unfamiliar with it, they will approach it a lot, you know, a lot more. Uh, I don't know yeah. why. Is there so any interest? Do you guys want to do a touch version of Mirror Moon at some point? I feel like that just would be really great. It would be a nightmare. Yeah. Well, we would like to do like the the cockpit interface with touch, but then like when you're on a planet, oh yeah, touch controls with that. Yeah, it's, it's a pain. In fact, I think a Vita version would work very well because you can do touch and then control. Yeah, but it's dying. Why? But that's too bad. Uh, uh, how do you feel about having like the players' fingers all over the screen? Excuse me. How fingers do you feel all over like the if, screen. If you had like an iPad version or whatever. Oh yeah, because it would cover up the art. But that's a big problem that I have with Panoramical. Like a lot of people ask me, you know, to do like a uh, version of Panoramical that runs on the iPad and you can just control it on the iPad. But to me, it's so weird because it's some. It always works so well to have like an external controller to the game, regardless of the size the size of the screen. Uh, that I always, you know, tell people that I don't want people squeezy fingers all over my artwork. <laughs> yeah. So the the problem there is that you want people to be able to interact with the different elements at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. You want them to be able to turn two knobs at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like I can solve the problem. Uh, I mean, I, I have like this working prototype of an external iPad controller, but no, no, uh, I, I played it. Yeah, but yeah. So. I, I don't understand why don't you just like use one tiny part at the bottom of the screen for controls and just use mm. the top the top part of the screen for the visual. Mm, I don't think it would uh, work. Like I also like the you know screen real estate to be yeah. as big as possible. 
I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, honestly, the best way to play Panoramical would be with a projector and a and a and a fader, you know, fader bank in your lap. Yeah. And like, it's panorama. Oculus, it's panorama. Oculus. Eh, eh, there's a good question. You, how how many people here are gonna do an Oculus version of their game? I think Fernando, you're already working on it, right? There's a yeah, there's a Panoramical scene uh, space yes. for the Oculus. Fucking a Oculus Mirror Moon would be pretty amazing. And Enough, Christopher right. has my Oculus key. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> Yay! So are all three games potentially going to be on the on the Oculus? In a bundle. In yeah, a bundle. we should. We should bundle. <laughs> the only thing is, I feel like I will be finished with Eleven like ten years after you guys are finished <laughs> with your stuff. Ten years. Ten years is fine. I can get <laughs> that roadmap. Just don't, the don't, the don't do too many sales because you'll devalue your game before we can. <laughs> well, that's a, that. That may be a thing that I want to write about. Then that may be an interesting thing to put in the article is to talk about the Oculus. Because I, 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 I remember the first time I ever used it, I I felt like the less realistic and more stylized the art is, the more. Agreed. Of an interesting experience, it is. Yeah, actually, when I was making the scene, I so you're in this forest kind of thing, uh, and you're looking around, and instead of changing the parameters with the controller, you change it with just looking around. Oh, um, wow. And I started to put a lot of detail in everything, but then when I tried it, you know, the at least the current dev kit has a pretty low resolution, yeah. and I had to make the graphics even more abstract. To make it work better with with the open screen, but it ended up working well. So, I don't know. Well, cool. Do you get? Does anybody have any uh, like burning things that they want to get off their chest? I was just gonna share a video of my friend playing Eleven because okay. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's really short, but she was really into it. What's happening? I think that I was thinking about the, the, the interface of Panoramical, and and I was I'm not sure that I entirely agree on the fact that the interface of Panoramical it's more abstract and more difficult to interact with than a normal joypad because the most of mm, the design of you know faders and, and, and knobs mm -hmm. are found in many uh, electronics and can be found in many electronics in like the last thirty years or maybe more. So yeah, well, get, possibly uh, a lot of people that don't play game but interacted with a radio or uh, their car radio or a lot of different electronics. Mm -hmm. um, might see those devices or that the pyramidal device and recognize it more than seeing a joypad and relate to it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, well, I guess just I, thinking about it. I guess I said that it was more complicated at first because, like, maybe not complicated, but more there's a deeper space of possibilities. Yes. I guess with the panoramic controller because of all the combinations because every controller is analog. Where, you know, with the game controller the the possibilities I have is are are much more limited, you know, with even with two analog controls, yeah, there's you know you tend to just move in four directions and then you have a bunch of buttons and that's it. Um yeah. Um and also the controller doesn't tell you what each control does, um, so it's a bit cryptic in that sense. But that's also kind of the I point. I think it also kind of lures people, people in. I saw lots of kids and stuff playing Panorama yeah. at the Fantastic Arcade, so I think it can be a good thing too. Which is good because I spent most of our budget on that controller. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you, Wiley. What were you going to show us a video, Christopher? Where's the oh, controller now? I put now? it in the chat. I, I oh, we still it. got the controller. It's like hey. 15 seconds. Okay. It's very loud. 
Yeah. <laughs> she said afterwards, it felt like a religious experience on acid and that the world felt flat. That was kind of the biggest thing to me. I'm like, oh shit, this is awesome. I've, I've done something good for her life or whatever. <laughs> I've had really bad experiences with the Oculus when high. I don't recommend it at all. Oh, I haven't tried it high, actually. I think that the, pro the, the kind of game... You have to be very careful what kind of game Wait, you put Wait, I have tried it high, but only on, like... Wii, I really feel like that. new games need to be made for the Oculus Rift. I don't think that the existing games do work well on it. It's true. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. I feel like a game where you're in a cockpit of a, of a spaceship where you can look around the cockpit and then you've got, there's a layer of, you know, separation so between you and the control of the ships is it would be a good kind of game. Yeah, every game where you're actually moving through a space as an avatar in first person doesn't really work because, you know, you're not really moving in real life. Yeah. Right? You're, you are you with the with the Oculus. You need some yeah. sort of... I had layer. something funny. A friend of mine tried uh, the Oculus Rift here the other day. And I showed the built the demo that uh, comes with it, or when you install the SDK, and that's just a scene around this villa in Greece or whatever it looks yeah. like, like, something like that. And he went up to the edge, right next to the water, and he reached out his head because he wanted to look over the, <laughs> the ledge. But obviously that doesn't work, so he just ended up watching the floor. <laughs> but that's an interesting like additional thing that has to be mm. worked on, because as soon as you introduce a technology like that, people want to take it further. That thing with the, this control called the Hydra, I don't know if you heard about it. Mm -hmm. Is that the, the treadmill thing that goes in all directions or whatever? No, no, that's the no. um, Omni. Okay. The Hydra is this, like, almost like a Wii remote, but it's extremely precise. Oh. And um, so we did a jam at the, at the Double Fine offices where we were just experimenting with the Oculus Rift. And uh, so one of the... Um, uh, Drew Skillman, which is one of the VFX programmers at Double Fine, did a demo where he strapped the Hydra to his head and then put the Oculus on and that tracked the head position. So we did oh, that wow. thing where you can lean forward mm. and look down. And it's amazing. Cool. It's the best yeah. thing ever. It's like exactly what that thing needs, is head positioning and be able to do stuff mm. like that. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. All right, show your video, Christopher. <laughs> you, you, you have to watch it yourself. We can't show it. Oh, yet. okay. You can't... You can't uh... You can, but only with YouTube. Oh, uh, okay. Did you send a, a link? Yeah, it's in the chat. Yeah. Um, Timeline. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's just kind of funny because she's going into the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and she actually went like she kept playing and she every time she went into a tunnel she like raised her arms as if she were you know, on a roller coaster. <laughs> People got really excited. I wish that I had wished that there was a button that I could press to just go into the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> because it, that, that was the best thing at the planetarium. Like whenever we got through a tunnel, people were just like, ah. <laughs> That's still the most amazing part about the game. Like everything else is kind of just there, and then tunnels are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Um, I guess I'm gonna cook some dinner because my wife's gonna get home in a little bit. You're uh, married? Uh, thanks for talking to me, guys. If you have any things that you feel like I should... What? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you guys have any ideas for things that you think I should put in, let me know. I'm probably going to try and, and put something together by the end of the week and send me cool screenshots. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, oh screenshots. Thanks for doing this. It was, was fun. Yeah, yeah. it will be fun. Love everyone. It's great to talk to you all the time. Yes. Thanks. See you soon. So long.
Come back to Berlin, everybody. See you in Berlin. Bye. Bye.